Hi, I'm Linda from Small Step Labs. Let's encrypt the non-profit Certificate Authority has announced plans to end support of OCSP in favor of CRLs. But what are those and why? Find out in this video. Certificates are issued with expiry dates after which they become invalid. However, a certificate can become invalid even before its expiry date. Maybe it was lost, compromised, or is no longer in use. At that point, the certificate needs to be revoked. OCSP stands for Online Certificate Protocol and CRL stands for Certificate Revocation List. They are both methods provided by certificate authorities for browsers to verify the revocation status of a web server certificate before establishing a connection. When you type in a URL into your browser, your browser checks that the certificate hasn't been revoked or expired before establishing a connection. If a certificate has been revoked, your browser will display an error like this, advising you that the website is unsafe to connect to. OCSP offers a real-time method of retrieving the revocation status of a specific certificate from the issuing CA. If a certificate authority supports OCSP, an OCSP responder URL is included in the certificate details under the Authority Information Access field. For example, here is the OCSP URL for a revoked certificate. The OCSP responder has access to the CA database, which tracks the status of all certificates issued by a CA using their serial numbers. During the TLS handshakes, browsers and other relying party send a GET request to the listed OCSP server to retrieve the revocation status of the certificate before establishing a connection. A CRL is a periodically updated list containing the serial numbers of all certificates revoked by a certificate authority alongside their revocation timestamps, something like this. When a certificate is successfully revoked, the CA updates its record, and then, periodically, say every 24 hours, the CA compiles a list of all certificates that have not expired but have been revoked into a new CRL and publishes it. The CRL file's next update field specifies its validity period, indicating when the next CRL will be issued and the current one will expire. During the TLS handshake, if no OCSP URL is provided, browsers check if a valid CRL has already been downloaded from the issuing CA. If the CRL list is expired, the browser downloads a new CRL list and then checks if the serial number of the certificate in question it's on that CRL list. Now, the problem with CRL revocation method is that CRL does not provide real-time revocation status, which means there's a risk of a browser accepting a revoked certificate unknowingly. Despite this huge shortcoming, the CRL method is favored over OCSP because 1. OCSP requests can expose user browsing behavior. The OCSP responder logs requests capturing the client's IP address, which can reveal website access patterns. These logs could be shared or accessed by third parties for surveillance. In contrast, CRLs preserve privacy since the web browser doesn't send information about specific websites. 2. OCSP requests are sent over plain HTTP and not HTTPS, which means the risk of interception and content modification is very high. In contrast, CRLs are downloaded and stored locally, eliminating real-time network communication that could be intercepted. 3. OCSP is resource-intensive and requires high availability and precise clock synchronization of the CA and OCSP responder meaning that they can be down for more than a minute or two or things will break. Because of this limitation, most browsers do not bother with OCSP to avoid unnecessary glitches. And that's why Less Encrypt is opting to end OCSP support in favor of CRLs. At Small Step, especially for internal PKI, we advocate for passive revocation instead of OCSP and CRL because it's easier to implement and maintain. If you'd like to learn more about certificates and web PKI, see the description links below. Bye.